What makes someone fascinating? This is the 10 Most Fascinating People of Bermuda 2016. Sponsored by 1. Mod Blue Boutique and the Trades Women of Bermuda. Hosted by Lisa Pickering. Whatever name you know her by, you know her by her big voice and her big love for her community. In 2016, Patrina Powergirl O'Connor Painter was honored on the Queen's New Year's Honor List for services to the community. And today, we are so excited to announce Patrina's 2016's Most Fascinating Person of Bermuda. The now managing director of Big Brothers and Big Sisters and Power 95 radio host shared the story behind her sometimes painful journey into her own power. It's a little uncomfortable for me right now because I'm so used to being the person interviewing someone else, but actually to sit in the hot seat, I was so nervous leading up to this. I'm like, what is she gonna ask? I, I, I understand how people feel now, so. Yeah. Are you gonna be a little bit nicer than when you, you're always nice when you interview, but are you gonna be a little- I try to be nice. Yeah, well, you'll understand more where they're, will, they're coming from with yes. their nerves. Yes, and I'm shaking in my boots and my palms are sweaty. I see you at events and I, I, I hear about your, different things that you're doing and you're participating in charity events. Yes. But I don't really know a lot about you. And a lot of people don't know a lot about <laughs> Katrina. Okay. I know that, you know, when you were eight, it was the first time you kind of got into the spotlight by uh, singing gospel songs. Oh my goodness, you really put me on the spot here. I, I would say that I was in a cocoon stage back then. Um, I went through a lot being a gospel singer with my mom. Um, I started out at eight. Um, I was out, out on stage. Um, a lot of young people would look at me and not like me because of that. Um, you can make me cry, why do we start with this? But, but seriously though, on a serious note, um, I found that a lot of adults, they really liked me because they were like, hey, this is a young person that's positive in the church and singing gospel music. But what I found were the young people, like my peers, they didn't like me because of that. And they thought that I felt that I was better than everybody else. And people used to talk about me, they used to tease me, um, they used to bully me a lot. Um, in, in primary school and high school, I wasn't necessarily Miss Popularity. I wasn't the person that was picked first on a team or the person that was invited to everybody's parties. Um, I did have friends, don't get me wrong, but I was really at a stage where I actually suffered with depression for a little bit because wow. I felt so lonely. And it was a lot inside of me. It was things that I wanted to do, things I wanted to express, but I was actually afraid. Um, I was afraid to be who I was. I actually tried to fit in, and in my third year of high school, um, you know, I went to the Barclay Institute, and I did good in school, but then when I got to my third year, I got tired of people thinking I was this perfect goody two-shoes. So I was just, I just stopped doing my schoolwork. I didn't care, I, you know. You went the other hiking way. Hiking the little skirts up and trying to check out boys. I, I mean, I didn't do a whole lot of detrimental things, but, I wasn't being true to who I was. And my end result was that I stayed back in my dark year at Barclay. Um, that was so hard for me. But it's like, you know, you want to fit in. Yeah. And I, I was depressed, I was sad because I just wanted people to like me. I just want, I'm like, why don't they like me? They don't even know me. And they say they despise me, they can't stand me writing stuff about me around the school. It was hard. Once I stayed back, I tried to beg my mom. I'm like, mom, please don't make me stay back. <laughs> send me to another school. Send me anywhere else. Just don't leave me here at Barclay. She said, no, you're staying put. You're gonna be at Barclay and you're gonna repeat your third year. It was hard, but it made me um, realize that I shouldn't be worrying about other people and start to reflect on who I wanna be and, and what I believe in and not what everybody else um, you know, thinks I should be. Persona of Power Girl, where did that name come from and how long have you been See, the Girl? funny part about it is people think that I gave myself the name and they also think that Power 95 gave me the name, which is incorrect. I don't know if you know Lord Anthony, no. who used to um, have Club Malabar in, in Dockyard, right? Okay. So anyway, um, a few years, well, not a few years, it's been many years. <laughs> no, like few years, many years. Um, I used to come on, Riding On and I used to have a weekly top 10 countdown. Um, initially, I started out, we were promoting something for Power 95, and Riding On Show was in the evenings on a Saturday, and they said that was the best time for me to come on, because I was working in sales and marketing at Bermuda Broadcasting Company. So I came on Riding On Show, and we kind of like really gelled and kicked it off, and then he was like, you need to start coming on the show more, and you know, so we started doing that, and then... Um, I was promoting Power 95 a lot. I was out there doing sales and marketing. And then one day, Lord Anthony gets on the radio and he says, you're just a real power girl. And then after that, next thing I know, I'm on the street, hey, power girl. <laughs> and then writing on start saying, hey, power girl. And then that actually became my name. And he was saying, because 
I'm such a little person, you know, little in stature, he said, but I have a big booming voice and a big personality. And so he feels I'm a good representative of power. So what do you find most fulfilling about your work? At Big Brothers Big Well, which part of my yeah. work? Because there's so many. Like, You've got so, so many, many careers so on many, the go. I've got so many things on the go. Um, do you no, sleep? No, not really. Uh, a couple but, of hours here and there. <laughs> <laughs> a week. Uh, no, but with your work with Big Brothers Big Sister. You know, just knowing I'm making a difference. Um, Brothers Big Sisters uh, meant a lot to me because I've also had a lot of mentors in my life mm -hmm. that have been there for me, even during my rough times of depression and even trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life and my career path. There were many people in the community that reached out to me and actually were, were there for me. Now, you said that you yourself struggled with depression because of bullying. Yes. How did you deal with that in a time that there's still quite a bit of stigma around depression. I had a really good family network. My mom, my mom was there for me. Um, also, you know, I told you I was in, I'm, I'm, in, I'm a Christian, I go to church, so I had pastors, I had um, youth pastors and friends that were there for me. Um, it's a hard time when you wake up in the morning and you're just sad all the time, you're just sad. It was hard, you know. Um, sorry. No, 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 take your time. But my mom was there for me. Um, I did a lot of reading, a lot of researching, um, prayed a lot. I have faith in God, and I think I really have really, I think my faith actually also helped me to get through that, um, believing that um, there was going to be a better day. Um, but being able to talk, mm -hmm. I also went to like school counselors and different people that I can talk to to kind of express myself. Is that something you pass on to the littles at Big Brothers Big Sisters? Yes. Yes, very much so. Like if young people, a lot of young people in the community actually reach out to me, inbox me on Facebook, or if they see me on the street or at an event, and they share their stories with me. And sometimes I even get the opportunity to speak out at schools and um, to youth groups and, and, and different um, things that young people um, are involved in. The other day, a young person reached out to me. She's doing this magazine, and she asked me to write a letter to my teenage self. If I could talk to my teenage self, I'd be so much further along. <laughs> and what, would, what advice would you give her? to be confident, to not be afraid to speak up, to be sure of herself, and to let her know that she's beautiful, she's talented, she doesn't have to be like everybody else. And yes, there are gonna be people that come and go and say different things about you, but that's not my issue, her issue, my, my teenage self issue, that's their issue. You are someone that people notice in the community out there, always participating in different events, I'm seeing different events on the radio. Uh, I think people think that I'm absolutely crazy. <laughs> well, how do you have time for everything, first of all? You know what, I have a very supportive husband and family. Um, I find time. I mean, believe it or not, I guess it seems like I'm always out there, but when you realistically look at it, Monday through Friday, I'm basically at home. I work, big brothers, big sisters, my nine to five or nine to six or whatever time I leave there. Um, and most of the time I'm at home. Someone had written, and I haven't done this with any of the other nominees, but I really liked what they wrote Oh my here. gosh, I'm scared now. <laughs> no, no, it's not scary. It was actually a team effort that nominated you um, in, in this email, and they said, we are all in agreement that we have never seen a person so busy in helping, providing, and encouraging so many to stay strong while sacrificing her time and family for the love and success of other people. Wow. Her passion and constant support this year, and to understand the effect she has on people's lives daily without ever looking for any rewards. What do you think about that? Well, I, I don't, I'm a little speechless on that one. Um, it was touching. Um, so, so it's amazing to hear someone say, and, and you're saying a group of people actually say something so highly about me. I really appreciate that. You know, I really like from the bottom of my heart, thank you. It means a lot. Well, that wraps up this season of the 10 most fascinating people of Bermuda 2016. Don't forget, you can watch all previous episodes of The Most Fascinating right here on burnnews.com and the entire program on Channel 82. Thanks for watching, for your nominations, and your continued support. Have a great 2017. Until next year, I'm Lisa Pickering.